Hello students. So today I am going to start with the topic that is gate. Already you people have gone through the gate. I am going to revise some really important topics of the gate in this lecture and in the other lecture. I am going to talk about the assessment of the gate, how to do assessment of the gate with the help of motion sensors, with the help of biomechanical markers, with the help of force plates and what kind of gates we see in day to day life that I am going to talk. So today I am going to talk only about the basic components of the gate. Now first of all just emphasize on the definition. Gate is a rhythmic progression of body and characterized by alternating propulsive and retropulsive motions of the lower extremities. Rhythmic progression. Rhythmic progression. What do you mean by progression? Progression means going forward. So gait is a rhythmic progression of body. Now why rhythmic? Rhythmic means something is in rhythm. When you dance, we say that it is in the rhythm or it is not in the rhythm. In the same way, gait is also in a rhythm. How this rhythm comes? With the help of alternating propulsive and retropulsive motion of lower extremities and the upper also. You know when you walk, your arm also moves. See, here the arm is here and then the arm goes back, that is retropulsive and then the arm goes further back, that is retropulsive and slowly, slowly, slowly this arm is again coming forward then it is propulsive. Just look at the arm. This arm is forward. Now it is going back. This is retropulsive. Now again this arm is slowly slowly coming forward. That is propulsive. Same if you go to the limbs. The limb, this limb, this leg is going back. This is retropulsive. From here it went to here. And now this leg is going forward. That is propulsive. From here to here. So this is propulsive. So rhythmic alternating. Second thing you see. When this arm was forward, this alternate leg was forward. So basically what happens, aap jis arm ko aage rakte ho, uska opposite leg aage hota hai. And then jab aap us arm ko piche karte ho, uska opposite leg bhi piche hota hai. The same you can see. When this arm is forward, its opposite leg is forward. When this arm is going backwards, its opposite leg is going backwards. Again, when this arm is coming forward, the opposite leg is also coming forward. So this system applies to the whole gait cycle. Rhythmic progression of body characterized by alternating propulsive and retropulsive motion of the lower extremities. Now you all know there are two phases stance and swing. <clears throat> stance comprises 60% of your gait cycle and swing comprises 40% of your gait cycle. Stance phase begins at the instant one extremity contacts the ground and this phase is continuous only as long as some portion of foot is in contact with ground. So, jaysi hi aapka foot ground ke contact mein aya, tab se leke ye phase tab tak hi chalega, jab tak at least ek portion aapke foot ka ground mein hai, that means the toe off. You know, during toe off, only your greater toe is in contact with the ground. So starting from the heel strike, when the heel contacts the ground, then foot flat, your foot flattens, then mid stance, when the whole body weight is transferred to your foot, then heel lock, when the heel is going up, and then toe off, when the toe is in the contact with the ground. So all these phases, when at least some portion of the toe is in contact with the ground, then it is called your stance phase and it is approximately 60% of your gait cycle. Don't get confused with the below terms because these are according to RLA. Just focus on heel strike, foot flat, mid stance, heel is going up and toe off. This is not toe off. This is swing. See the toe is above the ground. In the swing phase also, it begins as soon as the toe of one extremity leaves the ground. Here the toe has left the ground. And then again going up and coming down. Abhi tak heel strike, 
वन ए सो दिस इज आफ्टर टू ऑफ वेन द टू हैज लेफ्ट द ग्राउंड एंड दिस इज द मिड स्विंग एंड देन दिस इज द टर्मिनल स्विंग वेन द फुट इज प्रोग्रेशन टूअर्ड प्रोग्रेसिंग टूअर्ड हील स्ट्राइक बट अभी तक हील ग्राउंड पे स्ट्राइक नहीं हुआ सो इट सून बिगिन द टू ऑफ वन एक्सट्रीमिटी डीप द ग्राउंड एंड जस्ट बिफोर हील स्ट्राइक और कॉन्टैक्ट ऑफ द सेम एक्सट्रीमिटी इट मेक्स अ फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ योर हील स्ट्राइक then there are one more terminology double support double support means that part of the gait cycle in which both limbs are in contact with the ground ideally we think that when one foot is in stance phase the other foot is in swing phase but there is some portion there is some 22% of your gait cycle in which both the lower limbs are in contact with the ground now when is this happen Now look at this. This is the time when it is toe off. Now during toe off, only the toe is in contact with the ground, and for the other foot, it is occurring heel strike. So during toe off, when the one foot is in contact, when the toe is in contact with ground, the other foot is in heel strike. Fine. The same thing over here. During heel strike, also when the toes are going up, the heel is going down. So basically, when your one limb is in toe off and the other limb is in heel strike, that is the phase when your foot, <coughs> your legs are in double support. Same double support for the same leg. So over here, if this is the right leg, when the right leg was in heel strike, the left leg was doing toe off. Same over here. when the left leg is doing heel strike the right leg is doing toe off so if you say gait cycle is from stance to swing or you can say gait cycle is also known as stride in this whole stride in this whole gait cycle there comes two movements when the our body is in double support means both the limbs are in support with the ground how one when right leg is doing heel strike and the left leg is doing toe off second when the left leg is doing heel strike and the right leg is doing toe off now the comparison of gait terminology just go through it once in the traditional which we call heel strike the rla it is called initial contact because it is the first contact of the foot when the traditional we say foot flat in the rla it says that the foot becomes flat and it is in response of taking load then whatever it is a mid stance in the traditional the same is traditional uh, mid stance in the rla heel off when the heel is going up the ground is traditional and in the rla it is called as terminal stance according to rla when the heel is off the stance is over when the toe is going off in the traditional it is called pre swing that means the phase which comes before the swing phase is called pre swing acceleration now when you lift the foot up from the ground that is acceleration in rla it is initial swing mid swing is mid swing in the rla deceleration when the foot is going towards heel strike in rla it is called terminal swing so just go through it one this is a stance phase this is your swing phase now variables of gait there are two basic variables which provide a basic description some are time or temporal and some are distance notice the difference in between this time or temporal variables depend upon the timing the frequency the duration of the gait distance variables they describe about the length the various types of lengths we acquire in gait now these variables which are the time based variables and the distance based variables they are affected by various factors now first of all age if someone is having age of about 60 to 70 the speed of their gait the frequency of their gait that slows down because body does not have so much energy our gait cycle is the one which consumes lots of energy which we don't know जब बहुत ज्यादा देर तक चलते हैं तो थक जाते हैं वाई बिकॉज द एनर्जी इज बीइंग कंज्यूम्ड 
the muscles are getting tired all the energy reserves are being used up in the body but with increasing age the reserve the energy reserves in our body decrease the muscles lose their power and due to that the length and the distance can uh, the length and the distance it reduces same with the gender in the females we have slightly less capacity height जिसकी हाइट छोटी होगी उसका स्टेप का लेंथ छोटा होगा स्मॉल स्टेप जिसकी हाइट बड़ी होगी उसकी लेग्स लॉन्ग होगी तो उसका स्टेप का लेंथ ऑटोमेटिकली बड़ा होगा साइज एंड शेप ऑफ बोनिंग कॉम्पोनेंट इफ यू हैव एनी काइंड ऑफ डिफॉर्मिटी इन योर ऑन योर बॉडी योर गेट इज गोइंग टू बी अफेक्टेड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ मास इन बॉडी सेगमेंट ऑब्वियसली वीज पीपल आर देर दे वॉक वेरी स्लोली गोइंग टू द मास दे नीड टू कैनी जॉइंट मोबिलिटी अगर आपके जॉइंट्स में मोबिलिटी है स्पेशली इन द लोअर लिम्स अगर आपके हिप जॉइंट में नहीं जॉइंट मोबिलिटी है तो वेरिएबल्स डिफरेंट है अगर मोबिलिटी कम है ड्यू टू एनी रीजन अगर फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी नहीं है जॉइंट में प्रॉपर रेंज ऑफ मोशन नहीं है जॉइंट में देन द गेट इज गोइंग टू बी अफेक्टेड सेम गोज फॉर द मसल स्ट्रेंथ द टाइप ऑफ क्लोदिंग एंड फुटवेयर इफ यू आर वेयरिंग हील्स ऑल द वेरिएबल्स गेट ऑल्टर your walking habits and your psychological status now if we talk about the main variables of gait first of all one is the step length now step length occurs this is step length step length occurs when the when there is two consecutive points of the same foot for the same event again focus two consecutive events of the same feet for the same event two consecutive point one two of the same feet hum right feet ka hi le rahe for the same event man lo right foot ne pehle yaha bhi heel strike kiya tha this becomes one point then chalte chalte ab right foot ne यहाँ पे किया हिल स्ट्राइक नॉ दिस बिकम्स द स्ट्राइड लेन दैट इज वन गेट साइकिल वाई इसमें राइट फुट का हिल स्ट्राइक आया फिर लेफ्ट फुट का हिल स्ट्राइक आया फिर राइट फुट का हिल स्ट्राइक आया तो ये पूरा का पूरा एक गेट साइकिल हुआ जिसमें राइट और लेफ्ट फुट एक एक बार शांत और स्विंग फेज में आ चुके हैं Obviously, the heel strike marks the initiation of the stand phase. So, यहाँ से right foot का stand phase हुआ, यहाँ पे swing phase आ गया and left stance में आ गया, यहाँ पे again right stance phase में आ गया and left swing में आ गया. ये पूरा आपका एक gait cycle बना and this is called your stride length. एक ही foot का दो जगह जहाँ पे heel strike हुआ, उनके बीच का distance है stride length. Then what is step length? Step length is two consecutive points for the same event of opposite feet ab ek foot ne jab yahan heel strike kiya uske just immediate the opposite foot ne yahan pe heel strike kiya so in dono ke beech ka jo distance hai that is step length similarly left foot ne ab yahan pe heel strike kiya iske baad after this right foot did heel strike over here in dono ke beech ka distance is also step length तो so, एक स्ट्राइड एक गेट साइकिल के बीच में दो स्टेप लेंथ आएंगे वट इज स्टेप एंगल स्टेप एंगल मीन्स स्ट्रेट लाइन से आपका हील कितना एंगुलेटेड है इफ दिस इज द स्ट्रेट लाइन हमारा जो फुट है इट इज स्लाइट एंगुलेटेड एंड द लेफ्ट फीट इज एंगुलेटेड टू द लेफ्ट साइड द राइट फीट इज एंगुलेटेड टू द राइट साइड दिस इज कॉल्ड स्टेप एंगल मतलब चलते हुए जो हमारा फुट है वो स्ट्रेट लाइन से कितना एंगुलर डिवेटेड है दैट इज कॉल्ड स्टेप एंगल देर आर सो सो मेनी वेरिएबल्स ऑफ गेट द टाइम टेकन द फ्रिक्वेंसी कैडेंस द नंबर ऑफ स्टेप टेकन देर आर सो मैनी जस्ट गो थ्रू द मंथ बिकॉज दिस इज सॉर्ट ऑफ रिविजन now the important thing which is important according to the practical things is path of cog cog you all know center of gravity the normal cog it lies midway between the hips few centimeter in front of second sacral vertebra 
For your center of gravity, it lies midways in between the two hips and few centimeters in front of your second sacral vertebra. Now, when you walk, sometimes you are keeping your right foot forward, sometimes you are keeping your left foot forward, sometimes you are bending forward, sometimes you are bending backwards. So, in throughout all these activities, your center of gravity alters. Remember, once I told you that center of gravity alters according to the position of the body and according to the mass you are carrying. If you are looking at the obese person or the pregnant woman, they have so much mass in their abdomen due to which the COG shifts anteriorly towards the mass. If someone is bending down, see, this is the normal center of gravity at the second sacral vertebra. When the person takes the arms up, so the COG is going a little bit up. When the person bends like this down, the COG shifts anteriorly. Why? Because all the mass is concentrated over here and the COG is also shifted anteriorly. So these are called vertical and horizontal displacements. If your COG is going up, this is vertical displacement. If your COG is coming anterior, this is horizontal displacement. Now see, the person is bending, this is your second sacral vertebra somewhere over here. But when the person bends, the arms are also coming forward, the thorax is coming forward, the pelvis is coming forward, the skull is forming forward. So all the spine and all the components are coming forward due to which the COG also shifts anteriorly. Now if you look at the different positions, this is a standing position, the center of gravity at the second sacral vertebra. If you look at the running, the center of gravity shifts anteriorly. What is happening in this picture if you see during running, one arm is back, one arm is front, one leg is accelerating further and one leg is behind. So the COG is also shifting anteriorly. Now during judo karate, this position, again the center of mass keeps on deviating. The thing is how this person is maintaining balance is of importance. So, what happens when we walk? When we walk, when we walk, when we walk, when we walk, when we swing, legs are swing, to and fro, the legs are going anterior, posterior, the arms are going anterior, posterior. So, due to this, our COG keeps on shifting up and down. When the arms go in front, the COG shifts up. When the arm comes down, COG comes down. When the legs shift anteriorly, COG shifts anteriorly and up. When the legs come back, COG also goes back. So all these kind of displacements in which the COG is going up and down due to arm and leg movements during gait cycle is called vertical displacement. But when you look at the horizontal displacement, when we walk, our limbs are going back उस टाइम पे the pelvis also moves, pelvis tilts anteriorly and posteriorly, pelvis tilts laterally also, pelvis rotates a little bit, that is called, उसकी वजह से हमारा COG right left, right left, shift होता जाता है, that is the horizontal displacement, if you look at this video now. This is a normal gait cycle in which there is arm swing. This is your normal gait cycle in which arm swing is occurring. Continuous arm swing of the left arms and the, of the arms and the legs. Now due to this continuous swing, the COG, look at the body, it is bouncing up and down, up and down. So this is why when you have जब भी आपका आर्म स्विंग होगा, the COG is going to shift up down, up down, up down, up down, up down, up down. This is called vertical displacement of COG. Now look at this person who is carrying heavy weight. जो COG S2 पे था, obviously वो सारा का सारा पीछे की तरफ चला गया होगा. Why? Because there is more mass in the back.
इस पर्सन में तो बहुत ही कॉम्प्लिकेटेड सिचुएशन है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेन यू वेंट फॉरवर्ड एज वी हैव सीन इज दिस दिस यू जी कम्स फॉरवर्ड बट नाउ वट कॉम्प्लिकेशन इज हेयर विद दिस पर्सन इज ये आगे बैंड है तो सी ओ जी आगे बट ज़्यादा हम आज पीछे है तो सी ओ जी पीछे की तरफ शिफ्ट हो गया सो इन सच काइंड ऑफ पर्सन द सी ओ जी इज शिफ्टिंग पोस्टीरियर टू स्पाइन आइडियली ड्यू टू बेंडिंग द सी ओ जी शू शिफ्ट एंटीरियरली बट दिस पर्सन इज कैरिंग सो मच हैवी वेट एट द बैक डैट ड्यू टू दिस वेट द सी ओ जी इज नाउ शिफ्टिंग पोस्टीरियरली टू द स्पाइन नाव इसीलिए जब ये ये वेट लिफ्ट करेगा इसके बैक के पोस्टीरियर मसल्स में बहुत ज़्यादा पेन होगा ही विल बी हैविंग सो मच पेन एट द बैक ऑफ द स्पाइन एंड अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ स्पादन इन द मसल ऑल्सो बिकॉज द सी यू जी शिफ्टेड पोस्टीरियरली इन ऑल द फोकस ऑल द स्ट्रेंथ टू ओवरकम द सी यू जी हैज़ बिन एक्सर्टेड बाय द पोस्टीरियर मसल्स नाउ डेट इज योर कोर मसल्स सो गेट देखो कितना अफेक्टेड है नीज आर ऑल्सो फिक्सड एल्बोज आर ऑल्सो फ्लेक्सड हाउ ही इज डूइंग द हील स्ट्राइक ही इज अनेबल टू डू एनी काइंड ऑफ हील स्ट्राइक प्रॉपरली इज जस्ट पुटिंग द होल फुट एट वंस सो दिस इज हाउ द गेट वेरिएश विद द हेल्प ऑफ विद ड्यू टू द मास ही इज कैरिंग एंड इट्स द पॉस्चर ही इज अडाप्टिंग नाउ दिस इज द लेजी वर्किंग दिस इज हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू और यू कैन से नाइन्टी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट ऑफ यू वर्क when you need to go for a lecture this is lazy work especially i got this video for you people this is how you proceed for the lectures now when you walk with the help, with this weight when you walk with this weight what happens the spine is bent forward the cg is coming forward the arms are swinging not properly the legs are swinging but not properly so low on energy and this is how we work when we are low on energy when we feel dehydrated and when we need to go to lecture then also we work with this gait so in this the cug is not at proper place so the vertical displacement the rhythmic up and down movement of the cug is your vertical displacement so how it occurs heel strike cug down mid stance cog up foot flat means heel strike cog down foot flat cog starts going up mid stance jab aapka ye wala limb pura weight carry karta hai mid stance the cog goes at the highest then dheere dheere jab heel off to off hota hai the cog comes down again heel strike cog down foot flat cog starts rising mid stance this is the mid stance the cog goes up at as to uske baad heel off then toe off so the highest point is the mid stance and the lowest point comes at the toe off jab aapka pura foot aapka pura foot aapka ground ke sath contact mein hai and it is carrying the full body weight at that time it is the highest point for the cog and when the foot is in toe off position at that time it is the lowest point for cog Now you will say कि एक फुट स्टांस में है एक फुट स्विंग में है तो ऑटोमेटिकली जब एक फुट स्टांस में है दूसरा फुट स्विंग में है तो सी ओ जी तो ना ऊपर जाएगा ना नीचे जाएगा मैंने बोला कि टो ऑफ में आपका जो सी ओ जी है वो नीचे जाएगा फिर मैंने बोला कि मिड स्टांस में सी ओ जी है वो ऊपर जाएगा सो दिस इज हाउ आर बॉडी बैलेंस इज विद द सी ओ जी अगर आप सिर्फ एक लेग पे वॉक करते लाइक इन अ केस ऑफ एम्पटेशन इन केस ऑफ फ्रैक्चर इन केस ऑफ नॉन वेट बेयरिंग उस टाइम पे सी यू जी डिसप्लेसमेंट्स को कैरी करना मुश्किल होता है जिसकी वजह से बॉडी एक साइड को लीन करना स्टार्ट कर देती है एंड यू गिव अ क्रच और अ केन फॉर द पॉस्चर करेक्शन सो डैट द पर्सन कैन वॉक प्रॉपरली बट क्योंकि हमारे पास टू लिम्स हैं जब एक स्टांस में होता है दूसरा स्विंग में होता है जब एक मिड स्टांस में होता है दूसरा टो ऑफ में होता है जिसकी वजह से सी ओ जी ज़्यादा ऊपर नीचे नहीं जाता इट शोज स्मूथ डिस्प्लेसमेंट्स अगर एक पर्सन सिर्फ एक लिम्ब के ऊपर चल रहा है उस टाइम पे दिस डिस्प्लेसमेंट्स विल बी मच मोर एंड रियली डिफिकल्ट फॉर द बॉडी बिकॉज सी ओ जी इज शिफ्टिंग बट बिकॉज वन लेग इज इन स्टांस एंड अदर इज इन स्विंग डी टू डैट रीजन दिस डिसप्लेसमेंट्स आर नॉट मच दे गेट न्यूट्रलाइज एंड दस enables smooth walking average displacement of cog is 5 cm up or down the curve we get due to the two legs in opposite phase ek stance mein hai ek swing mein 
इसकी वजह से जो हमें सी ओ जी का कर्व मिलता है इट इज अ स्मूथ साइनोसाइडल कर्व नाउ द लेटर डिस्प्लेसमेंट वेन वी वॉक देर आर रिदमिक साइड टू साइड मोशन ऑफ द पेलविस नाउ लुक एट दिस दिस इज द पेलविस दिस इज योर लंबर दिस इज योर थॉरेक्स दिस इज योर सर्वाइकल दिस इज योर हेड दीज आर योर आर्म्स एंड दीज आर दैक्स जस्ट लुक केयरफुली एट the orientation of these components during walking see how the pelvis is rotating laterally the spine is straight but the pelvis is rotating laterally see modeling kar raha hai ye clip mujhe just look at it how the pelvis is rotating laterally Now, due to this rota lateral rotation of the pelvis, the COG keeps moving like this, either, 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 like here, like here. This is called the lateral displacement of the COG. So, when the person is walking, there are vertical displacements which occur due to stance and swing. The COG keeps on shifting up and down, and when जब वॉक द पेलविस कीप्स ऑन रोटेटिंग लाइक दिस लेटरली ड्यू टू दिस लेटरल डिविजन ऑफ द पेलविस देर इज लेटरल डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द सी यू जी ऑल्सो ना विद ड्यू टू हील हाई हील ना इफ यू लुक एट द हाई हील जब हम हील पहनते हैं उस टाइम पे वॉट हैपन ड्यू टू हील देर इज अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ फ्लेक्शन एट द नी एंड द पेलविस ऑल्सो शिफ्ट पोस्टीरियरली All the beauty products, all the beauty specialists, they tell you that wear heels because they accentuate your hips, they accentuate your pelvis. But they never tell you that that you are doing at the cost of your own muscles, because of wearing these heels for the long time, your ankle is going into plantar flexion, your he your knee is getting into flexion, and your pelvis is your hips are getting accentuated. Now, what kind of muscles are going to be affected with the help due to these heels? As the ankle is remaining in plantar flexion for many many hours, the inflammation starts in the plantar fascia muscles and in the calf muscles. Your calf muscles are responsible for plantar flexion, so these calf muscles remain stressed and tight. The plantar fascia also remains stressed and tight. Now, because the calf muscle is in tightness. There is occurring knee flexion, and due to this knee flexion, the hamstring muscles are getting very, very stressed and tight, and the quadriceps muscles also. And if you look at the pelvis, because the knee accentuate your hips, if you think about it biomechanically, the heels is pulling your pelvis into posterior tilt. So, ये जो pelvis है, जब ये posterior tilt हो जाएगा. उस स्पेशली आपके नीज पे भी फ्लिक्शन आ रहा है आपका पेल्विस भी पोस्टीरियर टिल्ट हो रहा है तो इनके बीच में आपके जो हैमस्ट्रिंग मसल है इट इज़ बिकमिंग शॉर्ट टर्न वेरी वेरी शॉर्ट टर्न आप ओरिजिन और इंसर्शन को बहुत लॉन्ग आर्स के लिए एक दूसरे के बिल्कुल पास ला रहे हो यू आर ब्रिंगिंग द ऑरिजिन एंड इंसर्शन टूगेदर ड्यू टू विच द हैमस्ट्रिंग इज आर बिकमिंग शॉर्ट टर्न दे आर बिकमिंग रियली रियली टेंथ Now, due to this pelvic tilt of the pelvis, the lower back muscles, the posterior back muscles, they are also getting tensed in order to keep the pelvis in position. So, just because you wore heels in your ankle for straight five to six hours, due to that, the plantar fascia muscles, the calf muscles, the hamstring muscles, and the lower back muscles, the pelvic muscles, they are going to be tensed and stressed. If you walk with such kind of heels for straight away six to eight hours. then you are definitely going to have complaints of lower back and leg pain now how the gait changes see agar aap dekho jo hamara angle of toe out tha during gait cycle wo kitna vary kar gaya hai aur 2 foot ke beech ka distance bhi kitna vary kar gaya hai now if you look at this the knee is in flexion and how the gait has been varied just look at it how difficult it is to walk with the help of heels plantar flexion knee flexion pelvis also tilted posteriorly and how the gait has changed how the heel strike has changed there is no proper heel strike and to
which is altering your gait cycle very badly. Now last is running. Now during running, what happens? Running may हम लोगों के speed और speed increases a lot. जिसकी वजह से the portion of stand and swing phase that varies. See हाँ heel strike proper नहीं आ रहा है, foot flat mid stance proper आ रहा है, नहीं ना. Everything is altered. But swing बहुत ज़्यादा आ रहा है because in running we need to be in swing phase because we need to accelerate our body a lot and swing में आपके पास एक phase है acceleration so you need to accelerate your body you need to be the acceleration more so अगर मैं running gait की बात करूँ running में हमारा swing का जो acceleration phase है उसमें हमारा ज़्यादा time बीतता है so swing phase इसमें fifty percent के around हो जाता है and stance भी fifty percent के around हो जाता है Now she is bent forward, she is moving forward. This is why the COG is further ahead. Plus she is more in swing. This is why the COG is in displacement. And running is one thing that is more. The upper body motion is also hampered. Not hampered, altered. COG is contained over here. She is continuously moving. So much power, so much speed, and the COG is contained over here, vertical and horizontal displacement. So in my vertical and horizontal displacements, what the data COG like this up, 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 up for the vertical displacement, horizontal displacement due to this pelvis and shoulder motion as up with so much speed and frequency. And the person spent more time in swing phase than in stance phase. So this finishes with your initial part of the gate. Now this video contained this basic gate cycle and how this basic gate cycle, the swing and the stance phase, they are varied in different kind of daily life conditions like running, like wearing heels and bending forward, carrying the weight in your arms and so on. इसकी वजह से how the CO2 of your body affected as a vertical and horizontal displacement that was shown to you in this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about the assessment of the gait using various advanced modalities. Plus, we are going to talk about the various types of clinically associated gaits and what happens to the swing and stance phase in those gaits that we are going to discuss. So just go through this video once and again. This is just a revision video very easy to understand go through it once after that we will get to another lecture so take care of yours and stay safe inside your homes please don't go out and please complete our tests on time bye bye